Hey Nintendo fans, it's June, and you know what that means? It's time for a Nintendo Direct. This time, unlike previous years, well, previous years in quotations, you know, the years without E3, so basically every year since 2020, not counting 2021, if I'm not mistaken, we know for a fact that there will be a June Nintendo Direct, because Nintendo confirmed it, they, they've said that, they, that, that it will happen. They had the Nintendo gods Arceus and Palutena come down and tell us, hey, the, the we're gonna have a Nintendo Direct in June. Why would they do that? Well, they had a, you know, uh, briefing with uh, investors and, you know, they, uh, they also talked about something about involving a new system or whatever. And, you know, they just decided, well, well since we're gonna tell you that the next system's coming, we might as well just tell you that uh, the Direct is coming in June, which, by the way, this will be the most Quite possibly one of the most interesting directs we had in a while. Not because of what will be there, but what won't be there. Because as we all know, but they won't be announcing or showcasing anything relating to the next system. The next Switch won't be a part of this. And yeah, obviously this probably won't have any major Nintendo game. Any major third party games as most will be left and in, in the waiting for the next system outside of a few that I could see happen and yeah this also will be quite potentially the last Nintendo Direct specifically made for the Nintendo Switch or exclusive to the Nintendo Switch now it's possible we'll get one in September we normally do it's also possible that we'll get another one just for uh, for for a specific game or indie games uh, but i i don't know if that'll be the case i will be making a predictions video afterwards hopefully i'll make it uh of what i would predicting the next systems first year maybe year and a half depending on it and i think i'll include when the, the next system is revealed i unwatch and all that shit and i wouldn't be surprised and actually i'll tell you spoilers for that video already that that prediction or that pr the next system will be revealed hold on to your horses probably this october if not september doing it i wouldn't be surprised nintendo goes very much with the switch one's life cycle as a blueprint to what they're going to do for the switch 2 and we already know from leaks that well like leak, uh, these leaks are kind of worthless as they are just the code names for the next Splatoon and the next Mario. And we don't even know if there's code names. I don't think we know there are code names for Splatoon 4, although I think the leaker did say it was for Splatoon 4 and the next 3D Mario. I think most of it is just speculation on those. And that's also a thing. I'm not going to be utilizing all that. Uh, most, if any, of the, the leaks we've been having. I've heard very little. I know those, I know the code names for Splatoon and Mario. Uh, I, I know, actually, I know the... No, it's easy. Uh, wait. I think it's SP Red for Mario and Spiral for Splatoon. But also I heard Legacy, so I don't know. Legacy could have been for something else. Anyway. So, let's get on with the predictions of this... Uh, for this Nintendo Direct that should be coming to you live in, within the next few days. Actually, not the next few days, the next few weeks. So let's begin with that one. When is the Direct happening? Well, the Direct in June last year happened on the 21st. It was the 21st of June that we had the Direct. So going with that same logic, I would expect the Nintendo Direct to be on the same timeline or the same time period of the 20th this year. I don't think they're going to do it next week as next week is the uh summer's game fest nintendo is not going to be a part of it jeff Kelly wants nintendo to be a part of it someday but let's be completely honest the nintendo that has no want or need to be a part of it uh, the only reason nintendo used to be a part of e 3 was because of the showcase the only reason nintendo goes to the game awards because well for better or for worse they a win awards at times b get nominated at the very least and c it's a actual big events that will probably not have as many people that normally watch the directs or even are tuning in to every single presentation uh for gaming as it's an award show quote unquote 
So there's a bigger market that would put it that way for Nintendo to show up, especially because let's be honest, in the last what five six years, most of the time Nintendo's gone. There was has been with Smash Brothers. Everyone is here. No, yeah, it was Sephiroth and Joker. Uh, what else have they showcased there in the last few years? I know Brave with the Fault. They showed Codename Steam all the way back. They showed Bayonetta, which again fit the market well. The announcements of one and two and three. I guess three was just a trailer for the, the CGI revealed trailer, the teaser trailer. But nothing else really, as far as I remember. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I don't think they've gone there with with most of their games, and it's been only Smash really. And it was 2020, no 2018 with uh, uh, Joker. Which come on, it's Joker. It made perfect sense. And then. If I'm not wrong with me 20 with Sephiroth, was it 2020? Pretty sure it was 2020. And yeah, so you know, it's where everything fits perfectly. So again, they're not gonna be part of the game or summer's game fest, they're not gonna do one on the week so that uh Jeff Keeley doesn't tweet it out like look these we report they reported this. You might say, well, they wouldn't do that, would they? I'm like, yeah, they probably would just to not have it being associated with it and just be their own thing. So if I again predicting the 20th seems the more the more likely day but the 27th could also be it although i when was the direct in what was the direct this year the 2024 direct was it was it march 2024 my brain is fried was it february also yeah nintendo did catch the the leaker the google leaker yeah no wow this will be the first full nintendo direct since September 14th, 2023. 2024 got, so far, three presentations in the Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase, the Pokemon Presents and the Indie World. Wow, yeah, we haven't gotten a Direct since late last year. That's actually, you know what, that actually is my body. That actually is uh, messing with my brain. I could have sworn uh, that that wouldn't be the case. Jesus. So wait a minute, when was Thousand Year Door announced? Huh. Anyway. Wow, my brain. It probably was that one. Oh no, yeah, yeah, it was that one. Mario Wonder was the one beforehand that had the direct by itself. Sorry, misreading that. Wow, yeah. So, wow, it's even more interesting now looking at that. Uh, cool. Very interesting. Okay, anyway, uh, yeah, sorry about that little detour. Yeah, first direct in, well, it would be nine months, wouldn't it? Actual direct in nine months, not counting like the dark days of the, of um, of um, 2020. Jesus Christ, damn. Didn't see that one coming. My, wow. It's crazy how long it actually has been. I didn't even realize it. We had, yeah, we had the partner showcase and nothing else. Damn. So yeah, it's gonna be. It, it makes this even more interesting because legit we have. I mean, we have it's it's gonna keep being what it was, but it's now a little bit more interesting. Just a little bit more. And before we actually get into the games and the stuff, let's uh, address the Switch 2 uh, speculation. Obviously, as I said before, in, in earlier on, we are not gonna be seeing the Switch 2 here. Nintendo has officially said that. Don't expect it. The heck, they announced this direct because of it. Um, so yeah, don't expect Switch 2 or anything related to Switch 2 to be here. However, that comes with an asterisk. That is, any game dated 2025 or starting March 2025, I would say, has a very strong possibility of actually being cross-platform. You know, uh, obviously the rumors say that Switch 2 will be backwards compatible with the Switch, be it physical and digital. So it won't matter. However, it's just something to keep in mind. Any game uh, that has a, a vague 2025 date or post March 2025 could have a, um, a dual release. And any game starting with again March 2025 with a specific date, we have to look at it as a possible rule, the date for the next system. Especially one of the games that I predict, actually the game I predict will be the closer of this Nintendo Direct that will come up uh, later on, obviously. Oh yeah, let's actually get on with it, shall we? So before we actually get into the part where an actual... 
before we get into the actual predictions part of this, uh, let us talk very quickly about, you know, the next system obviously won't be here. And I said before, we could be seeing some games that could be cross-platform. Obviously, we hear the rumors. I don't know why I said here, uh, heard instead of here. I don't know. And before we actually get into the games and the stuff, let's uh, address the Switch 2 uh, speculation. Obviously, as I said before in, in earlier on, we are not going to be seeing the Switch 2 here. Nintendo has officially said that. I don't expect it. The heck, they announced this direct because of it. Um, so yeah, don't expect Switch 2 or anything related to Switch 2 to be here. However, that comes with an asterisk. That is, any game dated 2025 or starting March 2025, I would say, has a very strong possibility of actually being cross-platform. You know, uh, obviously the rumors say that Switch 2 will be backwards compatible with the Switch, be it physical and digital. So it won't matter. However, it's just something to keep in mind. Any game uh, that has a, a vague 2025 date or post March 2025 could have a, um, a dual release. And any game starting with again March 2025 with a specific date, we have to look at it as a possible rule date for the next system. Especially one of the games that I predict, actually the game I predict will be the closer of this Nintendo Direct that'll come up uh, later on, obviously. So yeah, let's actually get on with it, shall we? So I think the beginning of this Nintendo Direct shall be kind of similar, if not mostly similar, or actually it will just be like last year. Last year the Nintendo Direct opened with Pokemon uh, the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero. So I suspect this one will also open with Pokemon, this time with Pokemon Legends ZA, which, uh, yeah, I think will be the first game they showcase. Uh, then, this is the, might be the only game I can, can kind of see, no matter the release date. Uh, it's the one game I don't think we should take the release date as an indication to anything. I don't think a, a release date, even if it's a specific release date, given with a number, post-March 2025 that indicates either the launch of the next system or the launch or being cross-platform. Because it's Pokemon, they very rarely have done that. And by very rarely, I mean they have never done that. Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon launched after the Switch. Uh, Pokemon Black and White 2, I believe, launched post-3DS. Pokemon, uh, what was it? It was Fire and Leaf Green, I believe, launched post DS, and I believe Emerald might have as well. And I, and I think Crystal launched post GBA. So again, it literally means nothing. Every Pokemon, Pokemon has always launched after the next system's out. It'll be playable on the next system if the backwards compatibility is true. Maybe it will run better. I don't know. So this one is also one that predicting also will kind of predict the date. The date. Uh, I don't know, I started there. So it, this one is interesting, right? Because as far as we know, we don't... This is the only Pokemon game we're going to have for a while. I don't trust it completely, and I'll mention it a little bit. Well, actually, I mentioned it now, because that could be also the other opener. Uh, but I do think this game could... We, we theoretically could have this game launch just like Pokemon Legends Arceus did back in 2022 and be a launch early 2025. It would still be a three-year development cycle, uh, between Legend, between Arceus and Za, and this game could launch in uh, January. It could also be the Pokemon game at the holiday season, and uh, it's likely, depending on what Nintendo has for the next system, uh, depending on what what they could do again, what they did in 2017, which actually, once again, looking on what I said in the intro, like this, they'll probably follow the blueprint. But could actually see this being the launch launching in the in November 2025. I do think we'll see at least a little bit of it. Uh, perchance we'll see a new Pokemon, one of the new evolutions, our original variants, uh, maybe even get the Pokemon that will represent the letter A in Pokemon ZA. I say everybody's saying ZA, but it's ZA. Z is obviously Zygarde, so what will be the A Pokemon? Maybe they will do that, like kind of like they do with every reveal. And there's two versions of like showing the legendaries uh, but it could also be that 
Pokemon Legends uh, ZA isn't here. It is a game that will launch next year. It will be later in the year. And the game that they are intended, one of the big games that they will have for this year, or the big holiday title this year, is an actual Pokemon Black and White remake. I think this is more. I think this is likely. I don't know why I was going to say more possible. I think this is more likelier to happen, especially if Legends ZA is late next year, which I hope it is. Especially given the fact that 2026, so two years from now, it's the 30th anniversary of the Pokemon series. So Pokemon Generation 10 fits perfectly in 2030, especially being the first Pokemon games to be officially released and exclusively released for the next system. Black and White fits here. The more traditional remakes of Black and White being here, it also would go very much, it would go better, I should say, with... Uh, doing the legends and remix at the same time generation 4 got both at the same time so i hope and in a way we can still see both of the games happen uh differently this time around where it's a generate two different generations instead of the same generation within two months of each other or three months or whatever it was so i could see pokemon black and white remakes here I can also see why they didn't go for, for uh, Black and White 3 or Black and White Legends. Uh, at least for now, I still think they're happening. I, I just think it will happen post-Gen 10. So, yeah, that, I believe, will be at the very least the intro to, or the opener of the Direct. Okay. Okay, so, obviously, this is, as I said, the final, or should be the final Nintendo Direct, or one amongst the final Nintendo Directs exclusively dedicated to the Nintendo Switch. So I do expect most of these the games in this direct be ports or remakes. Uh, but there is one franchise I think we should talk about in this scenario that is The Legend of Zelda. Because Zelda is right now in a very interesting uh, placement. Uh, because Tears of the Kingdom came out last year, we're not going to get a brand, 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 brand new game uh, until at, at least 2027. And I don't think it will be even announced before 2025, or 2026, I should say. Uh, I do think Zelda will be a part of the launch here of the next system, but that will be a conversation for later. So what do we have for Zelda? We've heard rumors for a while about Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD that supposedly are done. Uh, I believe Midori, the leaker that has been getting a lot of shit correct lately, did say they don't know why they haven't released those games. My bet, uh, the obvious reason is that they've been waiting for the correct time to launch them, and we've seen that being a thing with Nintendo. They don't launch games uh, if they don't need to, you might say. Is that really the case? And the answer is, yeah. Metro Prime was only want launched when they wanted to. We know for a fact that Tears of the Kingdom was ready a year before, but they spent a year polishing it. Miyamoto claimed that the, the Odyssey could have... Was it Miyamoto? I said Miyamoto, but it might be Koizumi, that did say that Mario Odyssey was ready for launch uh, of the Switch, but they didn't. Nintendo keeps games, finished games, way, way, uh, in the back, waiting for the correct timing to launch, so they don't be, they end up in a situation like Square Enix did a few years ago, if not last year even, where they launch too many games too close to one another. As a matter of fact, that happened recently with Square, funnily enough. Uh, in the space of six months, we had two Final Fantasies, and that Pokemon did it. We had in two months, we had two two Pokemon games. Uh, funnily enough, uh, kind of different than when the Final Fantasy situation. Final Fantasy had two games. One was brand new, the other one was a remake. While Pokemon, technically speaking, were both remakes, although one was a remake, the other one was an actual new game, um, just in the same region. The difference was the Pokemon games both together managed to do 30 million and by themselves each has done basically 15, which is incredible. Um, and Final Fantasy, as far as we know, haven't done great numbers, but that's not a conversation here for, for this topic. The conversation was I was going to go about Zelda is, do we see Twilight Princess and Wind Waker here? I could see them. I could absolutely see them, and I'll go a little bit further. I'll say Wind Waker will be a shadow, could be a shadow drop, and Twilight Princess would come out later in the year. I do think Zelda will be something we'll see within the next system. I don't think it's the launch title. Um, 
I think the launch title will come will be could be in this direct, but will be later. And I think it fits. Now then we have also we have to talk about Tears of the Kingdom. I do think maybe we'll get a Tears of the Kingdom update. Just a little one. I don't know, a little one, kinda. I do think we're gonna be seeing they've said no DLC and well the game has been out for over a year and no DLC. But I do think they'll update the game. And I would say the thing I would like to see the update. There probably will be Master Mode. We haven't had Master Mode yet, which is weird. Uh, but I would not be mad if they Master Mode on this one, instead of being just a harder mode, a harder difficulty. They also added a Mirror Mode, which I believe is what originally Master Mode would, used to be. It was a mirrored mode, a mirrored version of the game. And I think that'll be kind of fun, especially if you uh, beat Mirrored Mode, and then you beat, uh, if you beat Mirror Mode, you can then uh, unlock uh, master mirror mode. Uh, I think it would be fun, it would be interesting, because a lot of times you don't realize how different you play when the map is flipped. I think it would be very interesting to see and how how you would go, especially for people that the, the the people that played both Zeldas and spend a combined over uh, maybe thousands of hours, hundreds at the very least. I know for for myself, I spent hundreds of hours in both. So it would be interesting to see them put both of them. Uh, to, to do that, how confusing it would be. But the other thing that's very interesting is that there... Oh, no, no, wait. Before I go into the other interesting thing, I also think here we could see a Hyrule Warriors Tears of the Kingdom game, uh, which could go in line with the other rumor I'll be talking about afterwards. And the Tears of the Kingdom one will be interesting because of time placement, because they would have to do it in the original way back in time uh, version because that was is the one that would fit but at the same time I don't think it could they, I don't think I don't think this one legitimately they could pull off what they pulled with um Breath of the Wild's Age of Calamity this Age of Calamity spoilers completely rewrites the history of Breath of the Wild's original 100 year timeline because it, the, the future champions came in and saved the day I guess in there, I guess it's an alternative timeline. I guess they could do the same thing here with some, uh, it's the link from Tears of the Kingdom that comes back in time with the champions. I guess I just talked myself into it, then I, that's what they're gonna do. I, I think it could be here, or this could go along with the rumor we've heard that is there's a minor Zelda game with Zelda as the main protagonist apparently being made. Now, it could be that it's this, a, a Hyrule Warriors game where Zelda takes focal and front stage as a playable character would link nowhere to be seen maybe just as an unlockable uh because it would feel weird to have an ahiru warriors game or a, a zelda game without link so i could see that being the thing i could also see it being just uh, a game i don't know how it would work uh where it would take place and what the gameplay would be especially because zelda is much more linked to link than peach is to mario like Mario can go on an adventure without Peach. You know, I guess you could say, well, but Peach gets kidnapped, that's Mario goes on adventures. Yeah, but in the Mario universe, we've seen that they can do things without the others, right? Wonder, yes, Peach is there, but, you know, she, you could remove Peach and it makes no difference in the entirety of the game. Same thing happens in Super Mario Land. Peach is nowhere to be seen. Uh, I guess you could say, well, technically speaking, you could do the same thing in Zelda because Majora's Mask doesn't include Zelda, and it's true, but most Zelda games, there is a connecting tissue to, to all of it. And I do think that this Zelda game could be just a, a, a game set in some timeline. It could be a Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom prequel, where Zelda, where you play Zelda researching and stuff. i always been a fan, and uh, I'll talk more in depth. Uh, of an, I, I, have been, I have a fan idea... And more of a fan, I've, I've championed this years ago when there was a conversation about making a female playable character for the Legend of Zelda series and more of a, uh, or even other things. But I'll talk about that uh, in, the Z in the Nintendo Switch 2 predictions video. Because um, I want to keep a few secrets uh, about it. And but it could be that, uh, or it could be the thing I'll talk about it later on. So it depends on what they could do here. It'll be interesting. Uh, and I guess the thing that could be here could also be the thing I'm thinking of, but be for another result, for another thing. But I won't, I won't spoil right now. I'll talk about it in the other one. Sorry, but you're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to keep you waiting. Now, moving on from the Zelda discussion, we have other topics to discuss. 
and another big franchise, but one that I'll be honest, I don't think will be here, which is the Mario franchise, of course Mario! Uh, I do think Mario will be here, but I don't think Mario will be here, if you understand what I mean. Obviously we're gonna be having Luigi's Mansion uh, 2 being here, it's very lovely, it makes sense, the wreck is focusing on the later half. But what, what outside of that could we see here? I do think Mario will have a new game here. But it isn't going to be like the big next 3D Mario or 2D Mario. It'll just be... I honestly think it's Super Mario Party 2. Maybe we'll get another remake, although I doubt. Uh, maybe... Maybe, fingers crossed actually, Wario gets a game. That would be pretty freaking sweet. But, um, I don't know. I don't... I, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. But I, I think that's, um, that's a pretty good indication. I think Super Mario Party makes the one amount of sense. Maybe Mario Sports. Especially if the Splatoon thing is real. Uh, then maybe I could see Splatoon 4. If it is 4 being the June game for 2025 with the Switch 2. So maybe Mario Sports happens uh, this year still or early next. Uh, but it, 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 it is it is a... Um, more of a more of an of a weird one here as we don't exactly know uh where they're gonna go with it with mario obviously obviously they're not gonna be doing anything big we just had mario um mario um just had mario odyssey so uh i i don't i don't trust that they'll just you know do something. Maybe we'll see Mario Wonder DLC, but again, I doubt it. Mario Wonder came out in. Well, I say I was gonna say when the game came out in October, if I'm not mistaken. But like, does it matter? Mario Kart 8 Deluxe had DLC like four, three years after it launched. So who the hell am I? What the hell am I talking about? Ignore that. Well, keeping on the line of uh, new games, I could also see another one that would fit right in uh, in announcements and one that. I'm legitimately, I'll be honest, I'm legitimately surprised it hasn't happened yet. That is... Tomodachi Life! I'm surprised we haven't had it! Tomodachi Life with the Me Creation tool from Miitopia. And more an upgraded minigames and more an updated craziness. If you play that game on 3DS, it was, hell, it was great. It's funny. A lot of the ran it's very random. If they add in more stuff, like they, they had a place where you were Mies can make songs. If they can upgrade that to, to have either more songs or a way for you to make your own songs, I think they'll be phenomenal. Just legit top tier. Or like a, 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 an upgraded version of the voices as well, which would be lovely. Uh, even using software similar to like voice mod where you can tweak it to make it sound more real. But at the same time, it's so fun. It's so good with the, the Microsoft Sam voices that they had that I don't know which one I would prefer more now that I think, you know what, put both in. So that is, it is, it is, uh, it gives people a chance. If you like more of the Sam ones, if you got like more of the, the more, I guess people would complain about AI, wouldn't they? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, but still, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. It'll be interesting at the very least uh, to do so. That game was fun. Add in a bunch of more crazy and craziness and events. Make it so that you need, you, you can play for more than like, like half an hour a day without things coming to a screeching halt and add stuff like i think for example i don't think they had schools in you could have kids and babies in the game but i don't think there was like schools and shit to send them and like like go full blown like get more stuff to, to get me to do like they had they had a stop the a store they had restaurants they had the, the me news channel all of this shit that was done with the me's Add more to it. I think that'll be fucking awesome. I would, I would love it. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I would absolutely love it. And now finally, continuing on with a brand new game. Let's call this the brand new gameness area. Actually, um, two games I wanted to talk. I was going to say finally, but no, there's two games. 
The first, I think there'll be another 99 game announced. Maybe, we'll see. They did, they did Mario, 9, uh, Mario 35, right? But what, they did Tetris 99, and then like, what was it? A year or two later, they did Pac-Man 99. Then they didn't do anything until F-Zero 99. So maybe, maybe, we can get another one. Just saying, I just remember that. But the other thing that I was going to say finally, I think this will be maybe one of the final, if not the final, brand new exclusive game to the Switch that will come out this year. Outside, obviously, of Pokemon Legends, Zade comes out next year. But I think this will be the final game, the final brand new game for the Switch. Sorry there, voice went away for a little bit. I think it'll be Star Fox. I know, right? I know it's a weird one. I know the chances of it are slow. But it does feel like the time is right, doesn't it? At the end of the life cons of the console's life. It's been eight years, if I'm mistaken. No, nine years. No, eight, eight, eight. It was 2016. Since Star Fox Zero, maybe even a Star Fox Zero remake. I legitimately think that some of the games on Wii U at the end weren't bad per se. I do think that they um that um that they suffered from other other things. Like Star Fox Zero, or, or I should say, I shouldn't say the games at the end. I feel like some games on Wii U suffer from the consequences of the gamepad. And I feel like Star Fox was that. Star Fox, I think, from everything that I've heard, people that played it, they're like, the game's good, the gamepad inter interaction is not bad. The bad part came from, like, the aiming and stuff, so may maybe remove that and just make the game just played with one controller, obviously. And, um, yeah, I think, I think it could work out very well. I think improving the graphics would help out, uh, remove a lot of the, the, the shtank that game had for, with a lot of people. And I think F-Zero's, maybe, maybe, I say, I, I I like the fact that I began this with the, this is the final new game for Switch, and I end up convincing myself of a Star Fox Zero port of all things. <laughs> uh, you know, you know how, you know how your boy is, dumb as a brick. Now, there's not a lot more games that are left for Nintendo to release on the Nintendo Switch, and uh, like I said before, I expect this a lot to be more ports and shit like that. So what else can we have? Well, we're gonna continue on the port saying, and I expect this one. This one could be, could happen, could not. It's uh, again up in the air. Although this one, I think, and I believe people would really like something that we heard even the developer of it kind of push for it. And you might say, well, developers pushing for something doesn't mean much. Yeah, but um, he wasn't just any random developer. He wasn't just a guy that worked. On this game, you know, it was, uh, I believe he was the director of it, the guy that revived it, the reason why this game existed, the guy that revived this kind of the series because of one thing, one small thing, um, in, in, by adding him to, like, his own game, and, uh, I mean, I, I could see it, and, uh, you know, it's, um, hey, we'll get there, it will be, get it, surprising HD, I think, uh, maybe, potentially, makes sense. Should happen, honestly. Should that happen? Uh, will it happen? Who knows? I think he will. Sakurai obviously has made a point uh, talking about how he wanted it, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it did. You know, it'll be very, very cool if it did. It'll give a lot of us uh, uh, the option to play for the first time. A lot of people that played it the first time around to play it again, especially in H, not just in HD. I would improve controls. I remember a lot of people uh, not particularly liking the controls or liking the game, but the controls being a turn off or God, this the, the, getting getting pain like arm pain like playing the game. So uh, yeah, I think this one would be very interesting to see. And obviously, we'll, I'll be remiss to not talk about the final. I say final, but we have another part. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it afterwards um, of ports and remakes. There's only one more port. I feel like it's, I mean, to be fair, I want to say, just as I was saying, that I remind myself of this. I remember there's a leak of another game, another remake port coming to Switch, which would be uh, Rain uh, Kirby and the Rainbow Brush, I think, or Curse, I think that's what it's called, which was a Wii U game where, you, you know, you use a tablet and you would create a line for Kirby to and uh, the Waddle Dees and stuff to follow. Uh, it was, uh, it was cute. It was a uh, claymation. It looked very good. And uh, yeah, apparently rumor has it that will be another one to be coming. 
uh, one of the final Wii U games to be ported. Some that one that people nobody thought really was going to come because touchscreen, uh, you know, as the original was 3DS and then the second one was Wii U. People thought maybe Switch wouldn't get it because I mean it does have a a, um, a touch touch screen, but it's unless you're playing in handheld, that's not what you're going to use. But anyway, apparently that's it. But if that is in fact coming and is a part of this track, this is the next game. This one is a game I can see going two ways. I could see it coming to Switch. I can see it coming to Switch 2. Actually, no. I can see it coming to Switch and Switch 2. Or I could see it being Switch 2 only, which is Xenoblade Chronicles X. Now, as I said before, I think Nintendo is going to probably try to very closely resemble 2017 with the first year of the next system, be it uh, in 2025. I expect Xenoblade Chronicles to be a part of it. In some way, shape, or form, Xenoblade Chronicles has been growing as a franchise. I can see them happening. As uh, it it makes sense, you know, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was a part of the launch year. Definitive Edition and uh, Chronicles 3 have kept up the momentum of the franchise, of the IP. Franchise is definitely growing uh, in small increments, for sure, but I think... I think X could legitimately be one of the uh, the next breakout moment for the series. I think it would uh, um, be more not more in line with what people want, but I, it's it's a game that has much more of a the world is much. More, I don't know how to, how to put it because I, I don't want to say impactful because uh, that sounds wrong. But I guess that's what I I, I would go with because I do love the worlds of two and three, but. The, the openness of of X uh, and tweaking a few things here and there could make X a really compelling experience for newcomers and people that are not about the Xenoblade franchise. And the exploration of it could be also very, very interesting for people outside of the, the series. So maybe, so we'll see. But I do think X is very clearly coming up. And the next game, it's the 2025, is the next 2017 for Nintendo. Uh, because I believe this game could be a cross-platform game. It could also be just a Switch game that comes that has that is playable in the next system by backwards compatibility, and that is uh, the alleged rumored remake of Fire Emblem and the Genealogy of the Holy War. I believe that's the name of the game. Could be wrong. I believe until Awakening came out, this was the best-selling Fire Emblem game, close to a million in Japan only. Never came out to the West, but I believe this was the closest. The franchise had been to 1 million uh, before Awakening, as far as I know. And as far as the numbers we have, I believe this is the only one that actually has numbers outside of, oh, it's speculated that it did this. The the. So, yeah, I think that this one fits perfectly. And again, like I was saying, if, it, if 2017 or 2024 or 2025, Jesus, I got all wrong years wrong there. Is the next 2017 and they want to copy it as much? What better way than have Fire Emblem and the genealogy of the Holy War, a game, a remake, or a Shadows of, like they did with Shadows of Valentia, a game of, a remake of an old Fire Emblem game that launches at the same year, on the same year, I should say, of the next system and not be uh, uh, released for it. And did it the same with the Shadows of Valentia? I wouldn't be, no, oh, Valentia, not Ventia, Valentia. And I wouldn't be surprised if they did the exact same thing here. Just that, you know, because of backwards compatibility, people will be actually be able to play it on the new system instead of locking it on the previous one. Now, obviously, when it comes to the parties, I'm not going to dwell too much on it. I'll, I'll mention uh, one rumor that's going around, and then we're going to move on, because from third parties, I'm not expecting too, too much. Obviously, there's a lot of shit we can, we can see, but there's way too many games out there. And a lot of stuff that's keep, uh, not just kept under wraps, a lot of things that could be brand new IPs and stuff. Um, I'm just going to mention one game and one thing. The one game is Mega Man, apparently there's rumors about a possible Mega Man game in production and development. And the other thing is, I do believe this might, uh, I came to, to think over the last few days, this might be really the final Nintendo Direct before the next system comes out, and that the September Nintendo Direct will just be a partner showcase and uh, basically a sent off to the Switch. Uh, so yeah, that's what I generally think. Now, I did say, well now we reach the final segment of this, the closer of the Direct. And what could be the closer of the Direct? I have one thing in mind and one thing only. I think it's time 
And I do think this will be a launched game for the new system. Or the NS, as we're going to call it from here on out. The NS. Because it just fits right. This is a game that was announced, well, announced in 2017. A game that has been rebooted in development. And uh, if you haven't gotten what game I'm talking about by now, uh, with all these marvelous clues I've, I've given you, uh, let's uh, let uh, well roll the tape. It just fits. It's been longer. It's been seven years since the announcement. Good God Almighty! It's been what four, or five years since the 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 rebooted, rebootness of it. Since then, since even the, since after re, the reboot, not only did we have the best-selling Metro game of all time in Dread, which even with the latest the latest data we have on it was at two point nine million. I don't think we've have any other numbers from it, but two point nine million and that's all we know but it's the best selling of all uh, good metroid game of all time then they shadow drop prime remaster like last was it last year or was it two years ago god where time goes i think it was last year but if it was 2022 i'm gonna i'm gonna cry a little inside um also just uh Side note very quickly, how much of this prediction feels like a 2015, 26, like from 2014, from the Wii U era predictions video up until like midway point through the switch of like this direct, this predictions video as included, uh, but not limited to uh, Star Fox, F-Zero and Metroid. These are like the, 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 the cornucopia, the trilogy of IPs. That everybody would talk about every single direct time. But yes, uh, although this time around I feel like it's actually legitimate to at least two of these franchises, F Zero and Metro, to be in this direct. We'll see about F Zero. Uh, but yeah, I think this is the cross platform game that's going to be at launch. The next system that doesn't need a massive blockbuster AAA launch title like tier breath of the wild it doesn't i mean obviously you could say well well metroid prime 4b and i guess you can consider it a big blockbuster game but it's not gonna be a 10 million seller i say that i'll, I'll say the words i said back in 2015 and 16 before uh breath of the wild actually more actually no i said this before breath of the wild was even showcased I don't think that just because something hasn't happened before doesn't mean it won't. I remember back in those days people saying Zelda has never hit 10 million, so Zelda U or Zelda HD at the time as people would call it is gonna get the re is gonna do that the 10 million. Nobody believed it. I always said you don't know just because the only thing limiting it would legit just be the 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 um, the system itself or. You know the way things are because i remember how many games sold over 10 million on the n64 for example i'll tell you how many i believe just actually i can just check right now i believe only one game to pull over 10 million units on the n64 i could be wrong on the n64 yeah one game that was super mario 64 and mario kart mario kart 64 sold almost 10. so golden Eyes and zelda ocarina of time were very close to that actually not really on golden i did, did eight and ocarina did uh 7.6 so yeah uh hmm. now obviously zelda had a range with ocarina and twilight princess being the offliners i should say uh, of getting it closer to the 10 million mark uh but I don't, I don't know about Metroid. I don't think it can do 10, I'll be honest. 
Not not before getting a few, not even, not before getting a game that sells five, more than five. That's what I mean. It doesn't need, the Switch 2 doesn't need it. It already has the back catalog of the Switch. It just needs to bring all the Switch. I could, I see it more as like the big showcase game, like Breath of the Wild was, just with, hey, by the way, here's all the games that can sell or would be on the system. Or games from switch one that gonna be getting updates for switch two i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of those games did not get like a remake or not a remake but like uh re-releases quote unquote with like a brand new casing that just said available on switch two or playable on switch two uh i won't be surprised if both zelda games uh, all the 3d marios on switch both the, the 2d marios the xenoblade games fire emblem you know the somewhat big rps i wouldn't be surprised if we do see that for some if not most not most but a lot of them all the pokemons the the the, the animal crossing ring fit uh woogie's mansion and woogie's mansion too um but i do think like the marquee quote-unquote game at launch would be this i think again they're gonna very gonna very strategically play basically or do either play note for note what happened with switch one to switch two with with the the first year maybe even i won't say year and a half because i do think that the second year will be better um the 2028 equivalent which will be 2026 equivalent for the switch two will be better than 2018 2018 was a good year by the end of it not early on good to remember that early doors the switch two uh what did not switch to the switch one what did switch one get in uh launch numbers not launch numbers in 2018 it was kirby and smash brothers i don't think anything else really uh but yeah i do think that metroid prime 4 will be the closer technically because i do think it's the final trailer it could be one of two things either they do a final trailer and then afterwards they say something about like like they normally like they did with Zelda chronicles definitive edition they just have a little bit talk about it afterwards Maybe with, um, like, oh, we've been working on it diligently. Maybe they do say it's for both systems and they just say 2025, don't give a release date. Um, per, ch per chance they do that. And then they go in to, or, or maybe they begin by saying, by the way, here's this, which is the next thing I want to talk about. And then the Prime 4 trailer. And the other thing will be probably Primes 2 and 3 remastered coming to Switch maybe shadow drop depending on what happens with f-zero gx maybe not we'll see depending on how much work these two games and f-zero gx have and the zeldas it's going to be very interesting what they decide to do with these games um so yeah i do believe that will be the case with prime for closing the direct again on a technicality if they do have the little bit of clip of like oh this is what happens this is what we're working on and by by the way primes two and three are launching at this specific date and depending on how much work, maybe we can even have a Metro Prime Trilogy release where it's like, I don't know, $80 and it's like all three. Because if these two don't have as much of a work done as Prime 1, and Prime 1 was already like $40, euros, whatever currency you use. Um, and then maybe then these ones, because they don't have as much work, would be 30, 20 to 30. So if it was 20, there'll be no discount basically on the 80, but just to have the box trilogy or something like that so yeah i think that could be the case but anyway those were all of my predictions for the direct i'm sure by the time the direct comes around and i have to make my bingo card some other stupid bullshit's gonna pop into my brain and i'll talk about it during it or right before the direct during the direct uh and in streams going on about please tell me in the comments what do you think is gonna happen in this direct do you feel like this is the last final general Nintendo Direct of the Switch era? And I do mean of the Switch era as in it's the only system on it. So for example, if for whatever reason they have the September Direct again, but they say, but they reveal the Switch 2 beforehand and they're like, by the way, this Direct will include Switch 2. I don't think they would do it because it's so close to the holidays. Um, do you think that this is the final Direct of, that, of this era? Do you think there'll be another one? And or do you think there'll be another, technically speaking, another Switch exclusive direct in the future? And yeah, 
Also tell me what your predictions are for it. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, remember to hit that like button. And if you want to see more content, hit the subscribe button as well. Uh, obviously, I do streams as well, both on Twitch and on YouTube. Link will be in the description and in the in the comment. And uh, yeah, highlights of streams are coming to uh, mostly my quote unquote second channel, who might become the first or not the first channel, but the channel for just the highlights and the predictions and all that shit. And the other one becoming just for the streams and the vods to stay up. Uh, we'll see how things go uh, in the future. So anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys soon, uh, be it on uh, or the direct, the direct highlights or the highlights. Uh, of uh, some of the playthroughs I've done on stream or maybe during the stream if you want to come check me out I try to stream as often as I can and as long as my internet allows it but anyway thank you for watching I'll see you guys in the next one take care bye everyone